I mean, you have to trust your partner. Like I was never worried. I didn't worry about him. Like it wasn't anything like that. But you know, the girls are comfortable. Most of the time the guys just kind of go with the flow, right? All right, what's up, fans? We are back with Kendra and Julian Uncensored. And do we have the episode that you've been waiting for? Last week, we dove into some very exclusive talk and mm-hmm. the bedroom mm-hmm. talk. Now we're going to know a little bit yes. more on Kendra's side, right? On Kendra yes. and her little parties at her house and how to get into them. So let's just start this off right with a bang. Kendra, let us in. Let us know okay. how we get into your home to where you're yes. cooking naked, making cookies in heels. I mean, yes. how, do the, how mm-hmm. does one do this? Okay. This was like probably like 12 years ago. So, I mean, I was, I think, I feel like security was not like so important to me then. I don't know what it was. You know, I mean, we have a lot of guns in the house and I have Professor X. So I guess we weren't like super crazy, right? We weren't parents then. So it's like, we were a little more relaxed, like, you know, go with the flow so anyway, yeah, so we kind of get into this this lifestyle and, you know, I sign us up and I give us the worst name ever. I don't even want to fucking tell you. It's terrible. It's the worst name. He's like, why did you make our name this? I'm like- You have to give us just, the name. I wanted you can't, to sign us up. You can't, you can't just, you, you, it's just open. Okay. It was 12 years ago. You can't hold it back from Yeah, us. I know. Okay. I don't even know why. It was, <laughs> it was sultry and sweet. He hated it. He's like, oh, you have to change that. I couldn't come up with anything else because like everything else was taken. Like, oh, do this. No. Like everything was taken. I'm like, I don't have time for this. I'm just going to do something. He's like, so which one am I? Like, oh, sultry. Like, this doesn't even make any sense. So he was like, hated it. <laughs> what the f- but whatever. It was bad. But that's okay. So I, you know, I said, oh, yeah, well, I signed us up for this thing because if we can go to parties and like girls are nice to me, like I want to go. And, you know, guys aren't like cr- too creepy and whatever. So he's like, okay, whatever you want, babe. And for us, it was more kind of like just being able to dress. I could like dress any way I wanted and, and no judging. And I, and I love women. So, you know, we could um, have, I had a lot of fun with the, with the chicks. However, there is like an, like a, there's like a code. Okay. in this, this lifestyle, or at least there was uh, when I, we signed up. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons too, uh, aside from them being nice was because, you know, Professor X, I just felt like he needed some variety, right? I think I was less crazy then. And I was like, I just want him to like be free and like have like, you know, sex with a lot of women. Like we just got married. You're not going through some midlife crisis. You better get that shit out now. So her, 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 I mean, lollipops all over him. I was just like, I'll sit back cause I'm not taking one for the team. I'll enjoy, you know, because um, he's not, it's not happening with this guy, you know? So we just, it was, it was fun, but there's a code. Okay. First rule of the lifestyle. She has the pussy. So she makes the rules. Okay. Just, it's just a standard when you're in a relationship, if the guy tries to take the lead, it's just going to piss the girl off. You know, you never, you just kind of, whatever happens, happens, right? Because it's a bonus. Even if you don't, you know, get a, a a taste of another chick, right? At least you get to watch your chick, like, you know, have some fun with a chick, right? And if you get to, you know, the, the come here and you're welcomed in, it's just a bonus, right? So it's just hot environment. It's great. And I think, you know, when there's no expectations, honestly, on either way, either party, like you have to communicate. So there's, okay. So that's like the first rule. Second rule, communicate what you're comfortable with as a couple before getting into the hot and heated situation. Because like, you know, your head's thinking one way, right? But, you know, you're wanting to like go full swap right? Maybe because this chick is freaking smoking and you're hitting it off and, you know, you have a couple cocktails and everything's just kind of flowing, you know, and your chick's having a good time. And, you know, maybe the guy's not that hot, but, you know, you're into this chick. So you're really hoping that your chick finds that guy hot so you can do the full swap, which means you share partners. Very rare because bitches are very picky. I am extremely picky. 
I just, eh, like I'm not, I can't, like I just, I can't, right? So, um, so that's full swap, you know, and some couples like they're all, they'll, they're full swap no matter what. Okay. So that's sex with the couple, each other's partner, right? You're swapping. Then there's soft swap. So, and there's code. So, you know, like, oh, I want to look for a chick who's, or a couple who's this or that. Soft swap is just the girls. The girls are the only, you know, and the guys just kind of enjoy the view. And then you guys maybe have same room relations, right? Where you can see the other couple. Sometimes it's separate. Like the girls will do their thing. The guys may be able to watch, may not be. Most of the time they do. And then each couple can kind of go do their own thing. So it's like there is, you know, some couples like date other people. And I'm just like, fuck that. I do not have time. I'm not going to stroke your ego. I don't need you stroking mine. Like, I don't need that. Like, you know what I mean? I don't I don't want to go on a date. I don't want to make time for you. I don't want to cuddle you. I, you know, no, it's too much work. So, but some couples like that. Um, it's just kind of worked, it works for them, but you know, okay. So that's rule one, rule two, rule three. I don't know if I even have a rule three. Um, oh, these are oh have a code word. Yourself. Let me tell you, these are my rules like that. And these are pretty standard though. Like, you know, um, that's the rule throughout the, at least when I was there, she has the, you know, she makes the rules essentially, right? You don't exchange numbers. The guy doesn't exchange numbers with the girls. The girls usually exchange numbers and then kind of go from there. Um, just because, you know, it's just not that. I mean, you have to trust your partner. Like, I was never worried. I didn't worry about him. Like, it wasn't anything like that. But it's just kind of like, I don't know. I feel like it makes the situation a little bit more comfortable for everyone. If, you know, the girls are comfortable, most of the time the guys just kind of go with the flow, right? So, um, yeah, but yeah. And communication, like have a code word. Like if for some reason, reason, like you, you're thinking everything's going well. And then in the moment, like shit's gone sideways or this guy's just maybe too aggressive or, you know, maybe not what you guys expected or you know, something you have to have like a code word, like, and, and you have to be able to bounce like when your partner is not comfortable. Um, and we have rarely have had, you know, like anything like that. I mean, we rarely even did like an entire full, you know, it was just like a very few, uh, people. Um, yeah, it was really one, two. I, I want to know, I want to know, and I yeah, think everybody else wants yeah. to know, cause you're, you said 12 years ago, you had people at that. And our last podcast, mm. we were discussing that, mm -hmm. you know, you don't just pick random people. You don't have a tender no. where you're swiping for couples and things like that. You mm -mm. have to know. Mm -mm. And I'm assuming if the mm -hmm. people are at the location, at your own home, the place you live, yeah. eat, sleep, and do all that, yeah. um, you have a certain, like, requirement to be a part of there. And it's only yeah. – it's exclusive. So I want to know how the people, how many couples were there? Because it sounds like there's yeah. multiple couples. How many couples were there? And then how did these couples get invited to that? Were they previous friends? Were they, did they just meet yeah. the requirements of what you had on yeah. your rules in the past? Um, how does that go? So we really, we didn't have a ton of parties at the house. We had a couple and the couple that we did, were generally, they were people that we had known prior to and then so happened to come across them in the lifestyle. Like one was a friend he worked with and then his wife. And then I was like, okay, cool. She's a nurse. He's a cop. They're clear. They're not crazy. Like we know, like they, they work together. So it's like, okay, this is cool. Even if like nothing, we can vibe, we can hang out, you know, if they want to do their thing. Um, other guy was a physical therapist, lawyer, like, and not that they had to be like, they don't have to be like a high professional. Like they could be just a blue cop. I don't care what you do, but you have to not be crazy. And we have to know that you're not crazy based on, um, the events that we've gone to through other people. So it's like after like, you know, a couple of years, you can kind of figure out who, um, who you want, like who's crazy. If somebody's new, you definitely don't invite somebody new. So it's like people that we've hung out with in the past, you know? So and then, uh, like they all had a requirement to bring one lady. It couldn't just be all dudes, obviously. So they had to. Yeah. No single guys. Unless no single. I, yeah. Unless it, it was for me, you know, like, or us, you know, just because a lot of times then I'm vetting that person, you know, I know that he's not crazy or whatever, but very rarely, like just because yeah, you just yeah, yeah. You kind of couples, I think, are a little bit more um, trustworthy. You know, not always. You get some sketchy ass couples, but um, 
Yeah, I mean. Would you host yeah, another party yeah, soon? So. Not at this house. I mean, other than the sm very small, very intimate, like, you know, little party that we had. Yeah, that was like friends I've known since lit high school and like people that he worked, a couple that he worked with. Um, yeah, so that was, yeah, that was, I wouldn't do that. These people have been to my house though before, you know, this party. So it's not like they were new. You know, so I can trust. So, them, so you know, but I, I would it now. The party that you had on Halloween or that Halloween weekend a few weeks back, and you, mm -hmm. you, you went to a place with couples, and it was your own little swinger party, I guess. Mm -hmm. And you had you, so there's paid like bartenders and stuff. Did they know what was going on? Like, yeah. there, obviously, it's, they said little, and I'm assuming you wouldn't refer to guys yeah, very as small. little. So I think that they're females. And like, were these female bartenders, yeah, they were. were they, they clothed? Were. Oh yeah, they were, but they had cute little outfits, you know, which is great. But they were like, they, they bartend, like that's their deal, you know? So yeah, they were fantastic. They were excellent. So were you, yeah. were you clothed I mean, they had, in your friends? Yeah. I mean, slightly. Yeah. So, I mean. So how yeah. would our viewers, how would our viewers get invited to your next <laughs> party that you have? Like, I mean. I know I they mean, want the invite. Yeah, I mean, I, okay, it wouldn't be at my house. However, we could definitely like host something really fun and exclusive. They just need a background check, like to make sure you know they're not some psycho ass. You know, um, yeah, really. Are we about to set up? Thing. Are we about to set up a, a podcast business where we're going to start creating swinger parties for our viewers? Requirements are you have to not be crazy, <sighs> have a significant other, and show it there, and then we just police them. <laughs> Is that, that, that works? I mean, I mean, I don't know that I would call it like, I think like that whole label, like swinger, like there's the expectation. I think it would just be a, like maybe a lingerie party or like a, you know, I don't know what I don't you know the, call it. Like I don't a, know the term, but I a masquerade party. We mm -hmm. can call it a masquerade party. Sounds professional. Yeah. You, you have to see yeah, Eyes Wide like Shut. That. I can't I believe like you've that. never seen that. I like that. We're going to have to watch it. Yeah. So something like that. Um, we used to do those like in the industry, they had like lingerie parties and they were fun. You know, they were hosted hotels, penthouse hotels and stuff. And, you know, girls would dress up, guys would, you know, sometimes come in like their, you know, robes or boxer, you know, whatever, like guys, you know, whatever they wanted. It was more about the girls just feeling sexy and, you know, having fun and yeah, just kind of like a positive environment. Um, where people can just feel free to. So that's that's true. Then so then there was in the in the film industry, the adult mm -hmm. entertainment yeah. industry, you would have their own type of parties called lingerie parties. There's air quotes if you're listening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, lingerie parties, and then they, they yeah. you'd have the same approach to it with all of the male and female, you know, yeah. entertainers. Were there other people involved that weren't entertainers? They were just regular, so, ordinary yeah, people. Yeah, they always had to be part of the industry. They had to be for this particular party. Not that we're – like I don't like to make people – I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I feel like everyone should be able to enjoy, you know, a lingerie party or, or something fun. But this was just an industry-hosted event, so for industry people only. So, yeah, it was it was cool. Yeah. How do you get an exclusive pass to join those industry only if you're not in the industry? Do you wow, just stand in the people. corner? Do you stand in the corner at one of the films and make it look like you're a part of it? That way you can be considered an adult <laughs> right? entertainer. Yeah. I was an extra on a on a browser set. I'm technically the background. in the industry now. I was the, the plumber that actually was fixing the, you know, faucet. That, right? that, that was me. Right. That was that was my crack that you saw. So there was some of my there was some nudity. So technically I qualify. I qualify. It's just the other guy came over and just fucked everything up. I didn't even get paid that day. Yeah, it works. That's right. I mean, yeah, rusty pipes, you know, we all got them. So someone's got to actually do the job, you know? I was oh, like, it's shit. so fucking, it's so funny. I actually, um, so on TikTok, I, I like went by and I found Johnny Sins and like, dude, he is so freaking hilarious. Like, he starts He's telling awesome. his stories. And how he starts telling and like showing like people like, oh, you could be anything for Halloween. Look. And he shows all of his different like outfits, a plumber, a pizza guy, a delivery boy. Yes. And like people are in the comments not knowing who he, who he is and be like, oh, you pulled this off. You actually do look good. And this 
how much do you make on your My costume God. or you put on your costume? I'm like, oh man, if only you knew. If like, only yeah. you knew. Yeah, he's he's probably one of the most requested um male talent. He's been around forever. We just did a poll, well, at least for me, and I said, well, who, you know, because I, sh I shot a couple scenes in um, uh, Vegas not too long ago. And and he's like, yeah, you know, um, Professor X was like, I said, well, who did, you know, who came up? And it's always like Jordy, because Jordy is like this Italian kid. He looks like he's 20. And um, yeah, so, so Jordy and then Johnny Sins. And, you know, the thing about Johnny, he's a always professional. He shows up, he does what he needs to do. And, you know, he's enthusiastic. He's clean. He's, you know, always ready to go, always, you know, has his edge. And he's just like very, um, he's professional and he gets, you know, a good, great performer. So, um, yeah. So anyways, but, uh, yeah, we didn't, uh, link. Who up, would be, but, uh, who would be your will, top I'm five? Sure. Who would be your top five, mm -hmm. uh, male performers that you enjoy working with? Okay. Um, uh, Manuel Ferrara, uh, is probably my number one. Number two would probably, I, I do enjoy work. I did enjoy working with Ramon. Um, I liked Ricky. Um, oh my God. Why can I not, I can see his face. God, I'm terrible. Oh, just his face. This is terrible. I could, I could, or excuse me, Isaiah Maxwell. Uh, he was, he was really great to work with. It's really hard to, to like, Kieran Lee is great to work with. Gosh, Johnny Sins, uh, Johnny Castle. But now it's just weird because Johnny and I are, Johnny Castle or Rocco and I are such good friends. It's, we can't work together. I'm just like, I can't. Like, you're like a brother now. So. Yeah, you but, have yeah, you hit your top, top five, five right there, and I understand now why you are famous in Mexico and against the Hispanic culture because you listed off a bunch of Hispanic representation mm. of, of male figures. Well, Manuel is actually f speaks French, and he's from France. So oh, his real name—I don't know what his real name is—but that's his stage name. Yeah, but he's French. Um, but he is, you know, I, I, I can't explain it. He was the very first male talent I ever worked with and I was very nervous and I, you know, because he's so experienced, you know, I didn't, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, but he has a way to kind of bring out whatever like sexual fire is within you with no, where you don't feel, he just wants you to just like let it out. Let the lioness out. And he brings it out. It, it just, he's been that way. And he's been that way for as long as I've worked with him and known him. Um, and just he's a great guy Pepe outside of, of porn stars. He's Pepe Le. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's one of the top dogs uh, for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah. And all, I mean, the main thing too, is just always like, you know, being a professional, like People don't understand. They think, oh, yeah, it's just, you know, no, yeah, it is. It is balls to the wall. It's raw. It's dirty. It's fun. It's insanely intense. It's it's work, though, too. So, you know, we're still performers and we still have to, like, turn certain ways and do certain things, you know, all well, while trying to, like, well, most people try to maintain, like, these faces. I just don't give a shit. I don't have time to go back and look, how, you know, <laughs> like, how did I look? Who gives a shit? Like, you know, I mean, I guess I should, but so have a great night, guys. Peace.